Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at logarithms and just focus on the graphs of the logarithms. Now, in this section, you'll also go ahead and do a couple of problems with growth and decay. But once you go ahead and take a look at how you can graph some of these, then I think answering those questions will be relatively simple. So let's go ahead and just take a look at the simplest form of our logarithmic function. Now, of course, the logarithmic function is actually based upon the exponential function. And so what we'll start off with, and we'll say in its simplest form, the logarithmic function is going to be defined as the log base d of x. Assuming that the original function, or the original exponential function that you had, was f of x is equal to b to the x. Okay? So, some essential characteristics of this particular function, y is equal to b, log base b of x, is that the domain in this case is going to be x has to be greater than 0. Okay, we know that the range is going to be y as an element of all real numbers. There's going to be a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 0, and there's going to be an x-intercept at 1, 0. Now, all of this information here is based upon the fact that you know what this function looks like, and then use the process of finding the inverse to then go ahead and find out some of the essential characteristics of our logarithmic function. So, if we were to go ahead and just summarize all those essential characteristics, this is what the logarithmic function looks like. And notice that we have our vertical asymptote here at x is equal to 0, the x-intercept here, and this function looking something like this. Now, remember, you have to also go ahead and visualize that, y, that line y is equal to x and think about the exponential function going like this. Then you can see that reflection about that line y is equal to x. Now, of course, the simplest form is not always going to be the form that you're going to encounter. You're going to form, you're going to more often see the most general form, or at least some form of it. And here is the most general form. We have y is equal to a log base b of x minus c plus d. Okay? Now notice again that we have the parameters a, b, c, and d and the variables are going to be x and y. So what we can do then is we can, let's go ahead and take a look at all of these parameters and see what these parameters do to the function. And what you should notice is that all of these parameters basically affect the function, the most simplest form of the function, in basically the same way. So if we go ahead and take a look at b, in this case b, which has to be greater than 0, and b is not equal to 1, and remember that that was defined based upon the exponential function, then we can say then that if b is between 0 and 1, y equals log base b of x is going to decrease. Whereas if b is greater than 1, then y is equal to log base b of x increases, and this is the general form of what that logarithmic function will look like. Then we can go ahead and take a look at a. They said that if a is less than 0, then of course the y equals log base b of x, which you have an idea of here is going to be reflected about the x-axis because that means that the y-value is going to be a negative if it was originally a positive and a positive if it was originally a negative. Now, if the absolute value of a is less than zero, then, oops, sorry. If the value of absolute value of a is less than one, then y then y equals log base b of x is going to be vertically shrunk. So in other words, it's going to get closer to the x-axis. If the absolute value of a is greater than 1, then y is equal to log base b of x is going to be vertically stretched. In other words, the values are actually going to be further away from the x-axis. Okay. Going to c, if c is going to be less than 0, then we know that that's going to be a horizontal translation to the left c units, and if c is going to be greater than zero, that's going to be a horizontal translation to the right c units. Same thing for d as before. We said that if d is less than zero, then that's going to be a vertical translation down d units, and if d is greater than zero, that's going to be a vertical translation up d units. And so remember we said that these two right here are basically going to be non-rigid transformations because the shape is going to be changing. Whereas in these two, C and D, we're talking about those as rigid transformations because the shape doesn't change, 
the, the, the graph of the function is only going to be translated left, right, up, or down. So in the end, what you need to be able to do is you need to be able to actually solve, oh, sorry, I should say solve. You should actually be able to graph in steps this complicated function, which is in its most general form. So we have negative 2 log base 3 of x minus 1 plus 4. Now again, which order do we do these? Well, the first thing that we have to look at is we have to look at this one here because this is going to be the most simplest. And the most simplest first has to take into consideration what b is. So this is, of course, the first thing that we have to consider. Okay? And then after that, what do we consider? Well, after that, we have x, x minus 1. So that means then that we have to look at whether the graph is actually going to be shifting left or right. So this is the second thing that we have to take into consideration. And then after that, we have to look at how that is being affected by this value here. So that means that A needs to be checked next. And then after that, we do the final piece, which is the vertical translation up or down. So that would be 4. So we'll go ahead and take, a, take some uh, practice take some practice steps at this during class when we can go ahead and actually show each one of these steps in sequence. So there you have it, there's the graphs of logarithms. Of course, once you're able to go ahead and grab some of these, taking a look at the growth and decay problems should be no problem at all. Okay? So let's see how you do. Again, we'll take a look at some examples in class and make sure that you can actually come up with a reasonable graph of this and also be able to express in words all of the transformations which apply to the different parameters. Okay, so we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.